Hello my fellow chatterers and book lovers. Anyone else who's popped in because you're curious about what this is or you have got a bit lost. Welcome everyone. I'm Chatty, welcome to my channel Chatty the Mad Chatter where I am going to be chatting away madly about doing a tea and taste. This is what most people call try a chapter um, but I like to drink tea and feel like I'm tasting my books. Um, if you did not see my December TBR which I will link here um, I chose four books for my TBR in December and then four books that I was then going to do a tea and taste for in January. And we are at this time. Um, so I'm doing two readathons in January. One is the Bootcamp Readathon and um, by Courtney from Tangible Reads. And one is the Past and Future Readathon by Emily from Novel Novels. Um, I haven't got it here, it's downstairs, but I have been book journaling both of these. So I've been enjoying doing a little spread. And one of the prompts for the Past and Future is Moody Mondays. So I thought, what better way of working out the mood I am in than doing the tea and taste. So it's all coming together beautifully. So the books I have are Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy, which is a middle grade fantasy. I have Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, which is a cosy sci-fi for adults, possibly. And it's the first in the Monk and Robot series, of which I believe there are two out. I have um, Tamarind, the Star of Ishtar by Justin de Bilan, which is a middle grade, possibly adventure story, magical realism. I read her first book, which was Ash and the Spirit Bird, which I put in the category of magical realism. I'm not sure about this one. I feel there's possibly some sort of magical element to it, but I don't feel it has that full on fantasy vibe. So that's why I'm guessing magical realism. Um, and that book I borrowed from my mum because um, my mum has amazingly um, continued her Just Been to Belong collection, um, which makes me happy because then I can just borrow her books. Yay. Um, and finally, I have The Giver by Lois Lowry, which I think is probably a classic um dystopian YA um in the US specifically um I have never read it I had never heard of The Giver until I came on to booktube and heard lots of people talking about it um I thought it sounded brilliant um and I did watch um uh Jessie from Jessie May um reading The Full Quartet um, and so I was very intrigued by it. I thought I definitely want to do that. Um, and I managed to get this lovely bind up of all four books in here. Um, so it's this really nice silver with red writing and red sprayed edges. And it's got a little bookmark as well. And I've had this for quite a long time. Um, so the, and I definitely do want to read it. And I think one of the reluctances, just me and my series, like really wanting to finish off series, um, apart from when I get kind of pulled into starting a series by Buddy Reads and things like that. Anyway, uh, The Giver, I will be trying a chapter of. So there we go. We are all set with these lovely books here. I have my tea uh, in a thermos because we're going to be doing this for a while. Um, I am probably going to be stopping and starting because I need to, uh, my children are from back from school, as you can see, it's quite dark outside now. Um, the blue just looks really cool on my camera. It's not quite as glowy in real life. Um, but I thought, you know what, let's leave the curtain open. There's no sun shining in. It's not causing any kind of glare. It's uh, quite nice to see a little bit of rainy times. It makes me feel extra cosy. I have my super cosy jumper, which is so snuggly. I really, really love this jumper. It doesn't look particularly cosy, but it is really, really cosy. Um, I'm also in nice, cosy, very jammy bottomy things, so I'm feeling very mood, really cosy, joy. So um, I'm going to be doing that and I will be letting you know um, what I think of each one as I go through and then making a decision at the end. Now on this channel, I do not edit my long videos. I have started to make like mini videos since I've, the program I use can actually do sort of like three or four minutes, which is exciting. There's no way that is going to happen <laughs> for this one. So there's going to be no fun editing things. It is just camera rolling, only the power of pause to stop you having to sit through me physically reading chapters in front of your eyes. Um, but no exciting vloggy funness going on here. So cheers, everyone. Anything could happen. We have started now. We are nearly five minutes in. It's officially rolling. Click, 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 click. 
yeah there we go one shot no editing and i am going to pick my first book to read and i did originally when i sat down to do this i was like oh, I, I think i kind of know even though i'm going to do the try chapter and it's all going to be fun i think i know which one i'm in the mood for but then having just put them all out and put them down, I'm like, oh, it could go in a different way. So I'm excited to see what happens. I'm not going to tell you which one I think I'm in the mood for. I'm going to see if that stays and I'll let you know at the end if it's changed or not and what it was. Um, but what I do want to do first is I do want to read the first line, pardon me, of each book to you. Just because I think it's fun. I think there's something exciting about a first line. So I'm going to gather them all in and do that. Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. Chapter One The Stranger. On the bright side of the valley, ten furrows from Lane End and some twenty furlongs from the village of North Owlcott, in a place where the great metal city of Medlock was just a dream, there was a small farm. Here we go, that's Wild Spark's first chapter. Moving on to Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar by Justin de Villan. One. There's a small photo I keep on my bedside table. It's old and crinkly with a neat fold along the left-hand corner. That's uh, that first sentence. Got quite long first sentences as we're going in. Let's see if we get any amusing short ones. So now A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. Oh, do we have a prologue to this one? Oh, we sort of look like we have a little bit of a prologue. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So this is just as a page before the first. I'm going to read the the sentence from sort of like this little preface bit before the first chapter. If you ask six different monks the question of which godly domain robot consciousness belongs to, you'll get seven different answers. And the actual first chapter, one. A change in vocation. Sometimes a person reaches a point in their life when it becomes absolutely essential to get the fuck out of the city. Okay, that's a different vibe to all the other ones, possibly because they were middle grade. <laughs> Definitely adult book. And finally, we have The Giver. And I wonder if people already know what the first line is of this one, if it's so well known. One. It was almost December and Jonas was beginning to be frightened. There we go. That's the first sentence of each of them. And I'm not going to lie, it has got me really excited to start reading the first chapters, which is what this is all about. So the tricky bit will obviously be deciding, I think. I'm going to drink some tea, have a read, and I'll see you in a bit. Hello. I started off with Wild Spark. Yes, Poppy. So, like I said, <laughs> I have just um, read the first chapter of Wild Spark, and already I could easily just flip over to the next chapter and carry on reading. I am instantly intrigued by this story. So, the farm that was described to us within that first little chapter, we have a map. I love maps, maps are amazing. So up here we have um, Hayward Farm and then there's their closest visit village, North Owlcott. And then here is the big city of Medlock. Oh, and there is my phone falling over. Amazing. So, um, so Wild Spark, it says, um, uh, what's it called? What did it call? A ghost machine adventure. So there's a lot of kind of robots and machines in here. So all of the work on the farm is described as being by um, robots, rather like robot humans or robot animals. Um, and one of my favourite things <laughs> that happened was, and we meet our protagonist called um, Prue. Yes, Prue, sorry. There's another character called Primrose. So, so we meet our protagonist, Prue, who sees a stranger come to the farm. Um, but then... Uh, a hopping wrench disappears and she has to chase after it. So it's faulty. <laughs> this wrench is faulty and she um, has to track it down and kind of pin it. And apparently it's supposed to be designed so it would find its own way to the toolbox afterwards, but it keeps trying to go to the local village. 
Um, so I'm already intrigued by this wrench. It's probably not sentient, but I hope it is. I love a sentient <laughs> object. It's one of the things that I really enjoy and find fun. So I did enjoy the hopping wrench. Um, but a mechanic has come to the farm and is looking for apprentices and has heard that there is a child here called Francis who is very good with mechanics and wants to offer him an apprenticeship. Now, Prue also reveals that she helped with all the machines on the farm and that her brother is has been ill and I think has gone missing. So I'm intrigued as to what has happened to her brother, what the situation is on the farm. Her mum seems quite closed off. We've also heard about um, what I presume is kind of like the ghost robots. Um, what was the phrase used? Where's the card? So the card, okay. So Charles Primrose, the craftsman of the Imperial Personifate Guild of Medlock. So like personifica personification robotics. So, and the idea of bringing like spirits back from the dead or something like that. So it sounds like there's kind of uh, feelings about this particular type of technology. There's a kind of concern about the technology. Um, but you've also got um, someone who is very clever in here that wants to be able to move on from just being at the farm and learn and improve their craft um, in mechanics. Um, so Prue is very, very tempted. She finds a card and it says he's leaving in the morning and she is very, very keen to follow him, but is aware this could be problematic to her family. And I want to know what happens. So that sounds really, really cool. So this is exciting. So I'm now going to read the second book. 